Good afternoon. Um, my name is uh, Emlyn Ballerin. I'm from the Centre for Educational Assessment and today I shall be talking about the national benchmark tests. In the background is my colleague Estelle Murray who will be dealing with the uh, question and answer. And we both work for the Centre for Educational Assessment who hosts the National Benchmark Test Project. Firstly, I'd like to start with what the purpose of the National Benchmark Tests are. The primary purpose of the NBT is to promote student success in higher education through the assessment of an applicant's academic readiness for university. Now, I'd like to stress, they complement and support rather than replace or duplicate the National Senior Certificate. So the tests are designed to assess entry level preparedness of students in terms of the key areas of academic literacy, oh, sorry, of, of literacies, academic literacy, AL, quantitative literacy, QL, and mathematics or MAT. The domains represent core areas of competency in which students entering any form of higher education would be expected to display minimum levels of proficiency. So of those three, of those three literacy areas, AL, QL, and MAT, the AL and QL tests are combined into a single paper, um, which is multiple choice, and the mathematics is a separate paper, also multiple choice. Both papers are approximately three hours long. So what is the difference between the National Senior Certificate, the NSC, and the, and the MBTs? So for the NSC, the NSC establishes to what extent a grade 12 student has met the curriculum statement expectations as expressed in the subject assessment guidelines. The MBT, on the other hand, assesses the readiness for higher education in the core literacy areas of academic literacy, quantitative literacy and mathematics. The MBT tests are criterion referenced. In other words, they are aimed at assessing student performance against standard levels of performance regarded by experts in the field as being acceptable for entry into higher education. So how do institutions use an, an applicant's MBT scores? The MBTs provide additional information to help make decisions around an applicant's access to university, and this is achieved in uh, a number of ways by, by the university. The MBT results are used in addition to and do not replace school leaving academic performance and exam results. For certain faculties, for example, health sciences, the MBT results make up a specific portion of the overall admissions score. And the MBT results may also be used as an indicator of eligibility for an early offer or for an entrance scholarship. Secondly, MBT scores can be used for placement within universities. And by this, I mean that MBT results may be used uh, to guide recommendations for additional academic support or for entry into augmented courses or even uh, entry into an extended degree program. The MBT scores can also be used by the universities themselves to help develop curricula. So, for example, if the MBT scores of a, an incoming cohort are hypothetically, let's say, particularly low in, in, in the MAT or math scores, then the lecturer teaching that score may be cognizant of that and include additional foundational information to assist in bridging the gap between school and the university. So which MBTs must a prospective student write? This is determined by the faculty to which you are applying. You will need to check with the university and faculty which tests you need to write. And in addition to that, what are the deadlines that they have set for receiving your MBT results? And dependent on those deadlines, you need to make sure that you write the MBT at an appropriate time in the test calendar. So the MBT AQL test, that's the AL and the quantitative literacy combined, is required for all programs that make use of MBT scores. For programs in commerce, engineering, health sciences and sciences, normally the MBT AQL and the MAT test are required. So how can you write the MBT in 2021 for the 2022 intake? 
In 2020, at the start of the COVID um, pandemic, we took the decision to put the MBTs online and for the 2021 intake, the MBTs were only available um, using the online test platform. For the 2022 intake, i.e. for writers writing uh, this year in 2021, the MBTs will be available online and at physical venues. However, our test calendar is somewhat shorter than it has been in previous years in response to the, to the COVID pandemic, pandemic. We will be writing on five online test dates and there are 10 pencil and paper test dates. But I have to stress this, the cautionary for the pencil and paper test dates are that these are dependent on lockdown levels and national regulations. So we may, depending on how, um, how, how the COVID situation changes in this country, we may need to either cancel or reschedule some of our pencil and paper tests. So I, I would really encourage people to make use of the online test dates if at all possible. So what do you need for your pencil and paper MBT test sessions? Um, a reminder that uh, you need to be at the venues by 7.30 for check-in. You must wear a mask. You will not be uh, allowed entry without a mask. You must social distance and of course be free of any COVID-19 symptoms. We will have self-reported screening at the venues and of course all uh, COVID-19 protocols will be in place. You will need to bring along with you your South African ID book or card or passport and you will be required to bring your own pencils and erasers, uh, preferably two pencils. And if you are writing the, the MAT in the afternoon session, you will need to bring with you lunch and water. For the MBT uh, online sessions, these sessions are normally written in the comfort of your own home, um, but you will need to be in a room isolated from any other interference. There is a compulsory simulation prior to the test day, and if you register for an MBT online test session, you will be notified in advance of uh, the dates and times of those simulations, and you'll be provided with a link to access the test platform. The online MBT sessions are written in a secure and proctored online environment, and it incorporates ID verification and artificial intelligence to monitor the, um, the test session, as well as um, uh, human proctors monitoring as well. If you require support, this is provided through a real-time chat support platform during the test session. And of course, there are minimum requirements for you to, uh, to do the online test sessions, and these include a webcam. You must have a PC or laptop, um, which meets the minimum specifications. Unfortunately, tablets and cell phones are not allowed for the online test. You must have stable internet and of course sufficient data to complete the test. There is a detailed uh, specification available on our website. So what are the test dates? The five online test dates start on the 5th of June. They're highlighted in blue, so the 5th of June, 26th of June, 18th of June, which is a Sunday, 21st of August and the 18th of September. All the other test dates are pencil and paper tests and are at physical venues. So how do you register? All, register, all registrations take place through our website, which is www.mbt.ac.za and registrations opened on the 1st of April. Once you enter the registration site, you'll be prompted um, for your ID number, or if you're not a South African, your passport number. You will need to have a unique email address. If you're writing at a pencil and paper venue, you'll need to know uh, which city and where you wish to write, and you'll need to know which MBT tests you're required to write because you'll need to make that choice. You'll be prompted in the test and venue selection pane um, as to whether you wish to write uh, the maths test and which language you wish to write your, 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 uh, your MBT test in either in Afrikaans or English. You'll be prompted for what region you wish to write in, and if you're writing the online test, that will be the first option. Otherwise, 
all of the um, provincial areas will be will be uh, listed on the on the drop down menu. If you if you've chosen a pencil and paper test, you will be able to view all of the available venues for a particular date on the drop down menu. Once you've completed your registration, you'll reach this uh, this web page and you can download your registration statement. And you will, you will need this in order to make payment. So what do you need in order to pay? All of our payments make, are made through the Easy Pay portal or at um, uh, outlets which allow for Easy Pay payments, and that includes Checkers, Spa, and so on and so forth. What you will require is your MBT reference number, which is the 93100 uh, number at the top there. And that is linked to all of your payments through the Easy Pay portal or at uh, convenience stores and supermarkets. So can you change your test date? Yes, you can. But the important thing to remember here is that in order for you to, to change or cancel your test date and venue, this must be done before the last date to register. And these are the dates that are available on our website. I've circled them here so that you can see what they are. And if you do not cancel or change your test date prior to this, uh, prior to this date, you will be required to pay for the missed test session. So how do you change it? Again, through our website. You'll need to enter your username, which is your ID number or passport number, and the password that you chose when you first uh, registered on the website. You will then be prompted to either edit your, your test date and venue selection or to cancel it. So what happens if you reach the test date and you haven't paid for your test? The MBT will not prevent you from writing the MBT test. So even if you haven't paid, you should continue either to the pencil and paper test venue or uh, enter into the online test on, 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 on the correct date and, can, and complete your MBT tests. You will not, however, be able to access your scores once they become available until you, you, until you have paid all outstanding amounts. This is a question which comes up regularly. How should I prepare and study for the MBT? And the short answer is you cannot study for the MBT. The MBT tests core literacy areas which are developed over most of your life and your educational um, and your educational experience. What you can do, however, is you can access exemplar questions from our website, which will give you an idea of the types of questions you're going to experience when you write the MBT. In addition to that, there's additional information around what constitutes academic literacy, quantitative literacy and mathematics. So to show you some of the examples that you can get from our website, this uh, is an exemplar of one of our academic literacy questions. Here's an exemplar of a quantitative literacy question. And here is an exemplar of a mathematics or MAT test question. These are all available on our website and I would encourage you to go to the website to, to access these and download them. So how many times can you write an MBT? We allow for writers to write the MBT twice in any particular intake cycle. And the reason we do this is, is not for you to try and improve your score, but if you felt that on a particular day your performance was off, you weren't possibly feeling very well, you were tired, distracted. Um, so we provide you the opportunity of writing twice. Should you write as late as possible in the year? Our research shows that there is no real benefit to writing later in the year. The content in all of the tests is cognizant of the curriculum uh, in your schooling, so you won't come across any concept or, uh, or question which deals with content which you won't have experienced at some point in your, in your schooling. What is the MBT pass mark? Well, there is no pass mark. Remember, this test is assessing your academic readiness for higher education. The way in which 
we look at MBT scores is to look at them against benchmarks, either being proficient, intermediate, or basic. So looking at the AR columns on the top there, in order to be proficient for degree for the degree benchmarks, you would need to score between 69 and 100 on the AL portion of the test. If you scored between 35 and 68 on the AL, you would fall into the intermediate range and anything between 0 and 34, you would fall into the basic range. So what does this mean? So if your score on a particular uh, literacy area is proficient, this would mean that you are able to cope with the demands of tertiary study without any additional academic support. If your score falls within the intermediate range, this would be an indicator that you may expect to face some challenges and that you may require some support in order to be successful. And if you fall into the basic range, this would mean that you may require quite extensive um, support in order to be successful. And this is why, if, I, if you remember correctly from my first slide, I indicated that the primary purpose of the MBT is in order to promote student success. So with the knowledge of your scores, you can get an idea of what level of support you may require um, in order to be successful in your studies. OK, so you want to register for the MBTs. You're having a bit of difficulty. Where can you get help and additional information? Well, the MBT has a dedicated professional help desk, which is, a, which is available to assist any prospective writer between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. on weekdays and between 7 and 10 a.m. on test weekends. Our contact number for the help desk is 021650-3523 or you may contact um, our help desk operators using our MBT email address of mbt at uct.az.za. Alternatively, you may wish to access our Facebook page or our Twitter page. I hope that you put your questions in the Q&A and uh, my colleague Estelle will, will deal with those. So I'd like to end this presentation by thanking you for attending and I would like to leave you with the slide which has all of the relevant information regarding our website, email address, Facebook page, even our Instagram account and Twitter or the project help desk phone number. Thanks very much and I hope you enjoy the rest of the presentations on UCT Open Day.